I'm back to another episode of Epic Gangsta Tales. Today's episode is going to be on one of the most vicious and loyal hitters that John Gotti Sr. had in his arsenal. None other than one-time Gambino crime family captain, Skinny Dom Pizzonia. Let's go ahead and get into the episode, guys. Now, Skinny Dom hails from the tough streets of Queens, New York, and is a loyal and dedicated Gotti loyalist. Skinny Dom came up under and around guys such as Carmine Fatico and his brother, as well as the Gaudis, Angelo Ruggiero, and John Carniglia. The whole Bergen crew, essentially, you know, um, that's really kind of where he got his start. Um, it was well known that besides dealing drugs, the Bergen crew under Carmine Fatico, and even later on, John Gotti Sr., was entrenched in the trade of hijacking specifically at JFK Airport. And uh, now, you know, for a little fun fact about uh, Skinny Don Pizzonia. Now, besides scratching names off the You Gotta Go list, it was said that Skinny Don made a fantastic sauce, you know, like a pasta sauce, tomato sauce. Um, and a couple of times a week, he would throw down in the Bergen Hunt and Fish Club's kitchen. His sauce was so delicious, fellow mobsters would take some home and mason jars to their families or to enjoy at a later time. In fact, it was said that that's exactly what the late Bobby Borriello was doing when he was gunned down on his front lawn by Frank Lastorino back in 1991. He was carrying a case full of mason jars filled with Skinny Don Pizzonia's pasta sauce when he, uh, when he was gunned down outside of his house. You know, sad story, but, you know, I just want to touch on the point that he, you know, he was a serious dude in the streets, and he was serious in the kitchen with the sauce, apparently. But, uh, let's get back to the story. Now, the first big event that would put Skinny Dom on the map was a big one. Um, Skinny Dom was chosen to be a backup shooter on the night of December 16th, 1985. Of course, I'm talking about whacking out Big Paul Castellano, you know? Um, this event would serve as a welcome to the big leagues type of moment for Skinny Dom. Um, to me, the Castellano hit was the biggest mob hit of all time. And Skinny Dom, Pizzonia was a part of that history. You know, crazy when you think about it. Um, there's been a lot of big mob hits, so been a lot of big names taken off, you know, um, off the list when it comes to assassinations, but the big Paul hit, come on, man. Nothing, nothing bigger or better than that, in my opinion. Um, a lot changed after Big Paul got clipped for a lot of different people, and Skinny Dom would slot right in with the Gaudi Loyalists, and in June 1988, boss John Gaudi Sr. would specifically ask Skinny Dom to take care of another problem for him. A man named Frank Boccia had been drinking and made the fatal mistake of punching the wife of imprisoned Gambino crime family captain, Fat Andy Ruggiero, in the face. <laughs> yeah, so you can picture how that went over, you know, so naturally, he had to fucking go. And uh, and Fat Andy's son, Anthony Ruggiano, as well as Skinny Don Pizzonia, and another man as well, Alfred Congilio, would lure an unsuspecting Frank Boccia to a local social club under the guise of playing cards, I think, you know. Um, whereas, you know, they would sit around having a drink um, at some point during that ordeal. Um, Skinny Dom would disappear. He would walk off into a side room where he would retrieve a handgun. And almost immediately, um, given the way that Boccia was positioned in the room, I think it was closest to the entrance and the, you know, where Skinny Dom went to go get the handgun and come back. You know, he was like right at that entrance. So almost immediately after retrieving the handgun, um, a now armed Skinny Dom Pizzonia came back in the room blasting. Um, and the unsuspecting Frank Boccia fell to the ground um, after trying to run. Now, it says, you know, it's a brutal incident. Um, Pizzonia had initially emptied the clip into Boccia, you know, and the bastard was still alive, crawling, you know, and uh, 
you know, at this point, he probably put eight rounds in him, you know what I mean? And a chuckling Pizzonia calmly walked over to Baccia, who's now on his stomach crawling, you know, trying to get out, you know, trying to get out of there with his life. Um, it says that Pizzonia then walked over to him and kind of was straddled over him, right? His back facing Pizzonia. Um, and that's when Pizzonia pulled out a revolver out of his waistband as he flashed a grin over to Anthony Reggiano and said, I guess this fucking guy just don't want to fucking die before emptying the rest of the revolver into Baccia's back, killing him, you know, almost instantaneously. Um, Skinny Don Pizzonia and Anthony Reggiano would then wrap the body in a top and then they would take the body out onto a boat and uh, they would attach some weights to the uh, to the body of Frank Boccia um, that, you know, ultimately would weigh it down, drag the body down so, you know, it wouldn't be discovered. And in fact, that's exactly how it played out. Even after people had copped to these murders or were tried for these murders, that body was never found. Um, Frank Boccia. Now, after coming through for John Gotti Sr., not once, but twice, Skinny Don Pizzonia would get that long-awaited phone call that every aspiring mobster waits to get. Um, you know, the call to the big leagues, essentially, you know what I mean? And uh, in a historical making ceremony, on December 24th, 1988, Skinny Don Pizzonia, along with the likes of John Gotti Jr., Mikey Skaz Di Leonardo, Bobby Borriello, uh, they would all receive their button in the same making ceremony on uh, Christmas Eve 1988. You know, big deal. A lot of big names made in that ceremony. Um, you know, and I'm sure for Skinny Don Pizzonia, it felt like at the time that it's all paying off. You know, I finally arrived, essentially, you know what I mean? Um, now, as you well know, New York City is still a wild place, but was really a wild place back in the 1990s, okay? You know, I've done videos on, you know, the Sex Money Murder Gang and all that, and it just really kind of highlights on how treacherous and deadly the streets of New York were um, in the early 90s, even the late 80s. Um, we're talking over 2,000 homicides, you know what I mean? I think in 1993, they came in at like 2,244 homicides on the year. You know what I mean? That's like, that's essentially what the cartels are racking up down there in Mexico right now. So it just goes to show you, you know, set the scene to how chaotic, you know, New York City was at this time. And, and really, you know, all five boroughs were rocking, you know. Um, you know, and like I said, between the, the 2,000 plus homicides a year, and, uh, you know, the drugs were rampant all over the city, you know. Um, and in fact, this next incident we're going to talk about, there's actually been a few movies made about it. It's a pretty famous incident. Um, you know, this this next event that Pizzonia was a part of, um, a drug-addled, drug-addicted couple were robbing mob social clubs back in the early 1990s. Um, as well as holding up mob-controlled card games, hitting, um, hitting, um, you know, with the Joker poker slot machines, you know, they would have these little, like, back rooms and bars and all that, too. They would go and, and hit those up for the, uh, for the cash inside the machines and all that stuff. They, they, they were two, a couple, you know, um, they, their last name was the Uvas, okay, they're known as the Uvas, um, and these guys were robbing everybody. They were addicted to heroin, and they were robbing everybody to fund their drug habit. Um, and they were said to have robbed Skinny Don Pizzonia Social Club not just once, but twice. And, you know, for, for the time being, got away with it. You know, it was said that Skinny Don was livid. You know, you can imagine the embarrassment of getting robbed not once, 
but twice by a drug addicted couple who thought they were, you know, some type of new age crackhead Bonnie and Clyde type of deal. I don't know what they thought they were doing, but there is a movie out there. Um, I believe in 2014 it came out. It had the guy from Boardwalk Empire in it. Um, it's called Rob the Mob. And it's it's a pretty good movie. I mean, it's not like... I don't know if it was in the movies or anything like that. But it's got some big actors in it. It's it's a pretty good movie. And if, if you're interested on this event that we're getting into right now... Um, I suggest you go check out that movie. It can probably tell you a little bit more about the situation than I can. I'm just really trying to state the facts here with this guy. He's very interesting. Um, you know, one of many interesting players around John Gotti and the Bergen crew specifically that we're going to get into. You know what I mean? Um, we've touched on the Gambino crime family in the past, but you know, um, I really loved everything to do with the, the mob genre and stuff like that. And New York is just so rich in mob history. Um, this is, you know, one of many that, that are, were around John Gotti that we're going to do videos on. Um, you know, but this guy was a, a very serious, serious man. Um, you know, but, you know, let's get back to it. But, you know, um, but like all things, you know, um, in life, essentially, the Uva's luck ran out. And um, as they sat in an idling car on December 24th, 1992, Pisonia and fellow Gambino mobster Ronnie one arm Truccio would finally track down the Uva's and uh, would catch the long-hunted drug-addicted couple at an ozone park traffic light and essentially they would hop out um ronnie one arm truccio um a one-time captain in the gambino crime family serving a long bid and pal uh skinny dom pisonia would jump out and gun down the couple as they sat idling at a traffic light in ozone park queens new york um you know, it was a big deal. It was a big deal. And there would be repercussions from this down the line. Um, you know, this was an infamous... They've made movies about this. Um, but, you know, you kind of got to give it to them, too. Like, I mean, they obviously knew what they were doing. Like, to be all messed up and, and addicted to heroin. To still be able to be on point and rob all these high-end mobsters and stuff like that. You know, John Gotti's inner circle. Those type people, you know. Um... And I'm not really sure if it's their skills, you know, um, or the fact that they were just so blatantly, like, you know, ignorant to the fact that, you know, they were going to have to pay, that that debt was going to get paid somewhere down the line, you know what I mean? Like, couldn't possibly think you could keep doing that and get away with it. But, you know, um, the mob would catch up to them, and skinny Don Pizzonia was right there with it, you know. Um, and... So yeah, after after essentially taking the Uvas out of commission, um, in 1995, Skinny Don Pizzonia was made captain of the Bergen Hunt and Fish Club. Um, he, he replacing Peter Gotti as the Bergen Hunt and Fish Club's new skipper, um, which is a big deal. You know what I mean? Um, it's hard enough to get made. You know, be get made and, and one of the five New York families. But then to go on and, and make it up to captain, very few people can, can say they did that. Very few people can say that they were made into some, you know, crime family in the mafia, let alone reach a, uh, you know, a, a higher ranking, you know what I mean, as captain and above, which is essentially a boss. You're a, you're a street boss, you know. Um, but as you well know, these stories always end one of three ways. And that being death, life in prison, or to turn rat and essentially turn on everyone and everything you ever believed in. It's no way to live a life. There are no happy endings. Um, there are anomalies, but usually there was some type of price that was paid along the line that would, you know, uh, resent you from, you know, if someone asked you, should I do this? Should I go into this life? Is it, you know, Usually, and by the end of it, you know, you're going to get a knock, kid. It's not worth it. No, you know, hey, look at me. I wasted all this time, you know. Um, but Skinny Dom Pizzonia 
would be smacked with a stiff 15-year prison sentence on racketeering charges and conspiracy. Skinny Dom Pizzonia, also a part of that that wide-ranging um, Rico, there was three murders that were put in there, the three murders we discussed about, um, accessory after the fact on the Paul Castellano hit, uh, Trigger Man on the Frank Boccia hit, and Trigger Man on the Rob the Mob Uvas, uh, you know, those guys, the ones who were robbing all the social clubs. So there's three murders right there that he was, you know, Anthony Ruggiano flipped, a couple other people flipped. But luckily, Skinny Dom was able to beat all three murders. He was not charged for a single murder, and he went down for the racketeering and the conspiracy charge, which in itself carried a pretty stiff sentence, 15 years, you know, and he wasn't young when he went away. Um, and on September 5th, 2007, Skinny Dom Pizzonia would head off to federal prison to serve his sentence, and on November 15th, 2019, Skinny Don Pizzonia would walk out of federal prison a free man and at 82 years old, the one-time captain of the Gambino crime family is said to be long retired from a life in organized crime. You know, um, so at least the man has his health somewhat. He's out from under it. You know what I mean? These, you know, uh, it's a common, it's a common theme here that we talk about. You know, you're going to pay eventually. In the end, you will pay for all the wrong that you do, you know what I mean? So, learn a trade, learn a skill, learn something that you can productively put into society, you know what I mean? We all come from different places and certain places and uh, are brought up under certain rules and certain things like that. But at the end of the day, each one of us has the ability to make the right decision and learn from past mistakes. You know what I mean? There's so much more out there than than living in a jail cell, you know what I mean? just food for thought but anyways this has been another episode of epic gangster tales i just want to say the channel and everything i i I was hoping it would be is really starting to turn the corner subscriptions likes views comments are through the roof and uh, i just want to take a minute to thank you guys i really really want to thank you guys for rocking with me rock with the channel and i'm so so excited to see where we can take this thing and um, the new heights that that we can strive to reach. Um, But, you know, what will make that easier um, to achieve would be to subscribe to the channel, guys. Like, comment, share. Most importantly, subscribe, guys. It makes a huge difference. But thank you for rocking with me. I'll see you guys next week. Hope you enjoyed your holiday weekend. Take care, guys.